Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. We'll, we'll make a start on the afternoon session. Uh, the first preparatory work for the Auckland Integrated Transport Plan, but just, just a little bit of a heads up that due to um, a, n a number of staff demands, we'll, we'll bring item 17 uh, forward um, after this item. But meetings people have to go. Robert uh, and Joe um, basically to endorse the scope of work to help council plan uh, that's medium to long term with regards our transport to you guys. Right, uh, thank you Mr Chair and Kia ora. Um, so I have just a very small number of slides and I'll get through them as quickly as possible. Um, you have the item before you and uh, I'll take, we'll take most of it as read, but we'll just um, cover off some, some key points just for, for clarity's sake. Um, so you might recall in February last year, the, this committee um, approved the scope for uh, some uh, work on the integrated transport plan with government but also a, um, uh, approve the formation of a political reference group to provide direction for that work. Uh, and that was a catalyst for a significant amount of work that happened in the first half of last year with ourselves and all the various transport agencies on reaching an integrated transport plan for Auckland. That work stalled in the second half of the year for a variety of reasons, not least of which, of course, was the election. Um, uh, but the new minister has indicated an interest in, um, in wanting to reinvigorate the work at some point in the near future. So we have a window now, we have an opportunity now for Auckland Council to develop its view of the city's transport future uh, and key matters related to transport ahead of those discussions with central government. Uh, and so we're proposing uh, at the request of the mayor, the chair of this committee and the deputy chair, uh, that we undertake some rapid fire preparatory work to help us be in a better position for discussions with central government as part of the uh, integrated transport plan proper work starting uh, at some point later this year. Uh, so today we're here to ask your endorsement for the scope of that work. And the scope set out in paragraph 17 and 18 of your agenda item, uh, just to quickly recap on some of the key items in it. So uh, what we'll be doing is setting out um, uh, recommendations for the key major transport projects required over the next 30 years um, uh, and that'll be in map format as well as some commentary adjoining that as well. Some of the key challenges facing the, the Auckland's transport system. Um, analysis of these projects against things like the future development strategy and other council transport priorities um, uh, in, including uh, emissions reduction, mode shift, safety and so on. Uh, and a variety of maps, you can see some of them listed there. Uh, Auckland Transport has already done some good work on drafting uh, early versions of these maps, so the work will, will update those and, and we'll, we'll share them with you, of course, and seek your feedback and direction on them. Uh, um, you can see uh, some of the maps that we'll prepare there. Uh, as well as uh, hard infrastructure, we're also looking at non-infrastructural interventions that might be required as well. Of course, time of use charging, top of that list. There'll be other regulatory changes as well. Um, interestingly, I think, uh, the, the scope also includes looking at the transport planning governance funding system as a whole. We all know there's uh, issues with it um, that make it harder for uh, the outcomes that council seeks to be achieved. Um, so we'll be looking to identify those issues. Uh, uh, a lot of work has been done on this already, particularly through the um, work done for the local bill that you saw in, uh, that you approved in August last year. Uh, some of the Points to note about this, of course, the timeframes are really tight. Normally, this is the kind of thing we would do in over a period of months. Uh, we're endeavouring to do it in the next one to two months. Um, but uh, we have uh, one thing in our favour there, of course, this will be uh, Auckland Transport and Auckland Council working together with yourselves on it, as opposed to with a whole variety of, of, of other agencies as well. As a result of these timeframes, we really will be drawing from existing work, existing business cases, the RTN plan, the Auckland plan, and so on and so forth, of course, as well as the work that was done last year on the AITP itself. Uh, we won't be commissioning uh, any, any new work. Um, we're going to have to carefully balance the aspirational with what is potentially 
um, fundable over, over this period of time, this 30 year period of time. Uh, we haven't quite figured out exactly how we'll do that, but that is the intention. Um, and the focus will be, as uh, Councillor Watson just mentioned, on very much on the strategic medium to long term issues. Um, as I said, AT and ourselves will collaborate very closely on this. Really key point to note, it is different from the RLTP. This is, this is not the same process. The RLTP, of course, is a 10 year investment program. We're looking beyond that um, and, and looking at a more, more strategic level. Uh, next steps, okay, as I mentioned, February last year, this committee approved the formation of a political reference group to provide direction on the AITP. Uh, uh, our recommendation is that we continue to use that group to provide the direction. You can see the members that were approved, uh, the members of that group as approved by this committee. Uh, and we will come back to, to this group, um, this committee, I should say, uh, both in April and in May, progress update in April, and a final and near final draft uh, in, in May. Um, the AITP itself, that's the work with central government on the integrated transport plan, um, the timing for that is yet to be determined, uh, and, and the Minister and the Mayor will no doubt be having discussions about that. Uh, back to you, Mr Chair. Thanks, Robert, for the very uh, concise analysis of where we're up to there, so I'll open it up for any questions people have got now. Okay, there, there are none. Um, I think um, Councillor Fletcher w would like to uh, move this recommendation. To Any discussion, ladies and gentlemen? I would like to second it. Oh, yeah. You're too late. Well, wow. Councillor Darby is going to defer to you, Mr Mayor. He <laughs> must be in a... <laughs> OK. Shove down the government's right. OK, we got that one. <laughs> Quote, unquote. OK. Um, moved and seconded. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you, Robert, and if you wouldn't mind just staying there, because we've brought the um, extraordinary forward. Uh, so that is 17 in your, in your agenda, folks, if you can see that. And, and again, um, we're, we're, uh, we're just really looking for a, a brief update. You, if people will be well aware of the GPS that came out uh, this week, and um, we're just really trying to keep the committee abreast of what the process is and responding uh, to that because it, it has to happen in amongst everything else. So perhaps, uh, Robert, you can spell that out to us. Uh, uh, Barry's got a few words to say at the start, I think. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Uh, very, very quickly, just in terms of process, uh, this is a verbal um, update of where we're at, uh, focusing on the process we have uh, scheduled for the 20th of March a workshop, uh, and uh, that, that's a time where we'll have uh, some real discussion around this. The submissions close on the 2nd of April, I believe it is, uh, and the next um, Transport and Infrastructure Committee is on the 4th. So the process, and Robert might speak to this on the way through, is we'll have the workshop on the 20th, uh, there will be uh, an outcome of that, a draft um, submission, which will go in on the 2nd, and uh, then at the next uh, committee meeting, there'll be a formalisation of that, and that will go in on the 4th, which uh, we understand the government can live with. Yes. Uh, Barry pretty much stole my thunder there. Um, uh, as I say, we, we, we really just want to cover off the, the, the process here. Um, GPS came out uh, on, on Monday. We, uh, as is standard practice with submissions, we will be going out to Mana Whenua, um, uh, seeking their, uh, inviting their, their input into um, council submission. Um, that invitation will go out tomorrow. Uh, on Monday, we'll be sending you a memo with a summary of key points from, from the GPS that will go to um, uh, all elected members, including local boards, IMSB, uh, and uh, Mana Whenua. Um, uh, the tick workshop says to be confirmed there. It has been confirmed. It will be taking place on, on the 20th. Um, uh, you'll see there feedback from Mana Whenua due. Obviously, that's very tight, but uh, we're bound by the timeframes given to us by the government here. Um, so it's unfortunate, but 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 necessary. Um, following the workshop, we will be getting the draft submission out to you. Again, as a standard practice, it goes to all councillors, all IMSB, um, and um, uh, local boards. Um, and again, timeframes really tight. We'll need your feedback 
by the following Tuesday um, in midday in order to um, update the draft submission. Um, uh, and as a standard practice, again, we will be attaching anything, any views we receive from local boards to the submission. Um, uh, and that will take place on the 27th of March. Very hopefully, um, the government has scheduled this uh, submission process uh, around the Easter break. So um, we then have four days, a four day weekend um, before the 2nd of April, uh, which as Councillor Watson said, uh, said uh, is when the, uh, it's due at midday. Um, we have cleared this informally at least with MOT uh, that we, um, of course the agenda for the um, 4th of April tick will have been published by that time or at that time and that will include the Auckland Council submission, and so MOT will consider that to be our draft submission, um, subject to confirmation by this committee on the 4th of April. Um, the council is leading the development of the submission, obviously, but we'll, we'll have very heavy input from Auckland Transport. We'll be collaborating with them very closely, particularly the finance and strategy areas um, on, on, the, uh, on the submission. I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover, so I'll hand it back to you, Mr Chair. Okay, th thanks very much, Robert, and as uh, members will see, uh, an incredibly tight timetable and timeline uh, there, and we'll just try and keep people as well informed as we can. Uh, any questions for Robert? Councillor Ferry? Thanks. Um, I just wanted to check, if we did do the retrospective for the 4th of April, um, what happens if what we pass on the 4th of April is actually different? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, and um, I don't actually have the full answer for you there yet. Um, we are hoping to get really full feedback from elected members on the draft when we send it out the previous week. And we'll be endeavouring to incorporate all of that feedback um, into the submission. Um, uh, so, but but in terms of if something changes between the second and the fourth, uh, we're, we're going to have to come back to you on that and also um, uh, work it through with MOT. Um, I just, uh, some of you are no doubt wondering about an extension. Um, we have asked and informally and been told no, um, and MOT and other forums have also publicly said no, there's no extensions on this. And that's partly because MOT officials themselves only have a matter of days to um, bring it all together. Just a follow. Oh, Megan might. Okay. Through the through the chair. Um, look, it's entire. Uh, <clears throat> I guess what we're trying to do, understanding that the MOT staff have got a very short time frame, so have we, and I don't think it's fair on us to try and have even less time to do this work for you by <clears throat> having to schedule special meetings or, or all of that kind of stuff. So that's what we've worked out with MOT. It gives them, I guess, a sense of what we're going to say. Clearly, there may well be changes. It's entirely fine, because when they get it, they will need to, and we can highlight the changes for them, and they'll understand that and consider that when they're going back to the minister. So I, th I, think, it's, um, I think it's a good um, compromise position for both parties. Thank you. Um, just to clarify, the, the 2nd of April being um, what in the education sector is called Education Tuesday, because it's still a public holiday. For that sector, um, we also have the stadium venues working group. So, the idea of holding a meeting that day is pretty difficult. Um, but also, just to clarify, will we be seeking to give an oral submission as well? Because that would be an opportunity to tidy things up too. Is that something we're seeking? Um, well, at, at the direction of this committee, we'll certainly um, do so. I would encourage that. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yes, uh, IMSB member, Honey. Um, thanks for the actual um, outline for your timeline to post submission. And, yeah, just clarity, what does invitation mean to mana whenua? I mean, in terms of the short space and we're going into the long week, uh, into a weekend, yeah. to get feedback back by the 11th. Yeah, so um, as with the submission on the GPS before, um, before the last election, um, we'll be doing the same thing again this time, which is essentially a, a letter to uh, all the various um, iwi, um, inviting, um, telling them about the, the, the GPS, inviting um, their views, uh, and, and the reason why we've put that date in there of the, um, the 
20th of March is because um, you know we'll be finalising the submission in the days after, having taken on board feedback from the workshop, uh, and, and likewise, if, if Mana Whenua views are to be um, to help shape the submission, we need them by then. So, um, the invites are going out to the listing of iwi that the council has. Yes. E iwi entities. Yes. Come on. Thank you, uh, Member Renata. Any other questions? Councillor Fletcher, then Hills. Uh, <coughs> kia ora, Chair. And I think, I guess it is difficult with the time frame because we won't really be able to debate maybe our thoughts and feelings go going into that. So I guess how, how do you see us getting clear steer? Because this GPS is dramatically different to the last, but it's also dramatically different to our plans and policies and strategies that we've approved as a council. So what is the process to take that sort of feedback on board? Um, well, so we're pinning a lot on the workshop on the 20th of March, where I'm sure there'll be a fulsome debate um, between councillors and, and, and committee members uh, on, on that, on the, on the direction of the, the submission. Um, of course, you'll also have the opportunity, um, once you see the draft as well, um, if collectively the committee doesn't feel that that's enough and you want um, some other form of uh, engagement along the way, um, then, yeah, we can do our best to try and fit something in, but that's, you, you can see the time frames. And, yeah. and through Chair, so will the basis of some of the, what normally happens um, through planning environment and parks when, it, when this happens out of sync with the committees is that staff will work on our current plans and strategies and policies approved you know, the Auckland plan to Tataki Atapiti, those sorts of things, as a start point? Is that what you're looking at to doing? Take our currently agreed processes? Yes, so we, we, we won't be, um, you know, going off in a direction of our own. We'll be following existing council policy and direction. Kia ora, thank you. Um, Councillor Fletcher. Oh, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Ferry, raises a very good point, and I'm, I'm really just wanting to look at, uh, realistically, the amount of time that's going to be required for this. I note on the 20th of March, we already have some workshops, the downtown car park, we have the Civic Administration Building, we have a number of quite meaty issues. Um, how can I have the assurance that we will be able to have sufficient time to do justice to these issues. And secondly, um, for the 2nd of April, in light of Councillor Ferry's um, points, I'm wondering whether that could be uh, an extraordinary transport and infrastructure meeting but held online. Would that, would that ease perhaps some of the tensions uh, for those who have other commitments? I guess that's something we, we, we can explore We'll get the director, Barry Potter, to, to look at that. We, we certainly will be out, given given the timeline here, we'll be out to accommodate people whatever way we whatever we can, way we can. And you'll ensure that the 20th of March that the workshop will be prioritised in order that sufficient time can be made available. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Thanks, Barry. Um, Councillor Darby. Thanks, Chair. This um, a few key areas that I'm sure you'll be focusing on, Robert, and there's a significant um, reduction in the capex for public transport um, across the nation, um, and I'd, I'm sure you'll be focusing on that, um, plus this, this um, road safety programs that are eroded significantly. I, I, I'm, I'm, there's too many areas that are eroded significantly. I'll let you pick those up. One of, the th one of the areas I'd like to remind the government of is their coalition agreements with the other two governing parties, um, New Zealand First and ACT. They, they seem to have lost sight of this particular agreement, but um, Section F refers into, in the coalition agreement evidence-based decisions, and it goes on to say decisions will be based on data and evidence with programmes regularly, ass regularly assessed to see if they are delivering results. Um, I actually think, in in light of um, you know the East West Link project, which we know has got um, it's pretty hard to find any evidence to support East West Link. We know that from 
um, looking at it previously, um, and it's got a, a, a paltry um, BCR. I think it struggles to get into the positive. Um, and in light of, say, the Auckland Light Rail project, uh, the updated business case there comes in at 2.4, whether it's at, at full surface or whether it's part surface and, and part underground. It's, but the, I think they're both at 2.4. I would like us to have, at least have a look at what it means uh, for the government to actually contract with the other two parties that they're governing with, uh, demanding evidence-based decision-making, and reminding them that we, we support that and we would like to see that show up in their subsequent decisions. Um, look, we, we, we can't really comment on content-related matters today uh, um, as regards either GPS or, or our submission on it, but um, uh, hopefully there'll be, well, uh, I'm confident there's opportunities within that tight time frame for, for you to make that point to your colleagues and um, convince them or otherwise that that's something that we should be covering off in, in the submission. Yeah, and look, it actually does contribute to the submission because mm. it's, it's pretty fundamental. I've got a foundation agreement with two parties that talk about that. All I want, I want to endorse that and see it show up through the GPS mm. and the delivery programs. Mm. Um, and on that note, I mean, the GPS does go as far as mentioning specifically, uh, you know, roads of national significance, I think they're still called, and the East-West Link. Can we check in with Ekapanuku on what the implications are of the East-West Link on the Orihanga, Orihanga Wharf project? Because my understanding is it creates a massive uh, severance between the, the town centre and the wharf. So I think we need to understand um, some of those projects and provide feedback. We, we, we can check in with Ekipanoku, yes. All right. Uh, the, um, any other questions? There's none, so I'm happy to, to move this. Seconded by Councillor Fletcher. Does anyone want to talk to it? Okay, thank you. Uh, all those in favour? Aye. Against? Okay, carried. Thank you, Robert and Joe. Move on to the next item now. We've got a couple of 